Welcome to DC to B Revolution, helping chiropractic students think big in order to live large. I'm your host, Noah Voles, and today I'm here with Dr. Robert Malillo. He's one of the most respected specialists in childhood neurological disorders in America, and he's been helping children overcome learning disabilities for over 20 years. He's an expert in diet, nutrition, and neuroimmune disorders in children and adults. In addition to being a researcher, a best-selling author, a professor, and a clinician, there's so much that you do and so much that students can learn from you. Thanks so much for coming on the show today. It's truly my pleasure to be here. Yeah. So I, I wanted to um, kind of jump right in. You know, you, you really specialize in these behavioral disorders. What personal and professional milestones or moments do you feel like uh, shaped that trajectory in your career? Yeah, I think as with most people, it's kind of like a natural evolution. Um, I think, you know, I believe that we are born with a purpose and that hopefully if you keep on moving forward, you get to that purpose, but it may take you a while and a few steps. Um, I think, you know, with me, it started, you know, with chiropractic. It started with neurology. I fell in love with neurology in, in chiropractic school. And then, uh, you know, started doing my diplomate in neurology immediately after I graduated. And so then I started really falling in love with the whole brain and the nervous system and, and then connected it with rehab. And, and the idea of neurology and rehab together really kind of my purpose. Um, and so, you know, I got involved in academics with my diplomate in neurology, and then I started teaching neurology, and, and that led to other degrees like a master's in neuroscience and a master's in, a, in, in rehabilitation neuropsychology. But I always was fascinated with um, human behavior. Um, I always want to know, you know, why we did what we did. I have the kind of, even in chiropractic school, I always ask that why question that drove my teachers crazy. You know, it wasn't just enough to give me a superficial answer. Um, and so, you know, when I really was trying to understand human behavior and really uh, at the whole neurology and in the early 90s was declared the decade of the brain. So this is, you know, right kind of when I got in my diplomate in 1990 and so all this brain research started coming out and new ways of imaging the brain and, uh, and all new information of how the brain really works. And it was really just fascinating stuff. And that's when we really started to look at some of the idea of what the hemispheres do and how they interact. Uh, but what really kicked it all in for me, uh, the father of three small children, and I had a neighbor who had come to me whose son was struggling with ADHD. And she had a number of families that she was connected with. And she asked me if I could help, if I had some, you know, some new way, or if I could really just look at some of the out there. Uh, at the same time, my oldest son, our teacher, one of his teachers, he had some attentional issues or something. So something that was really father of three small children, you know, this really connected and from there, you know, I just kind of became obsessed with the information and um, really it's led to everything that I've done now. Um, I think I realized early on that the idea of looking at the hemispheric imbalances in relationship to neurodevelopmental issues like ADHD and autism and dyslexia, I, I wouldn't say it was complete, but no one had really understood it. Nobody really understood it from a practical perspective. And not many people were really understanding, you know, what was actually happening. And that, uh, you know, once I saw that there was something going on that not other people were seeing, and I also saw that we were facing really a kind of an, uh, an uptick, um, I really dove into it. And I've devoted the last 20 years of my life to really uh, looking at it. Yeah, thank you for your devotion to that. And, you know, I, 
Uh, you spent so much time researching neurology, researching neuroscience, really diving into everything. And I feel like you were so saturated that when somebody came to you and asked for help, you were able to see it from a new perspective. And I think that's extremely valuable. And I'm sure that, you know, was the kind of the initiating moment for the, for the brain balance centers. Um, you know, as a, as a student, you know, immersed in the information, what do you think that's unique about your mindset and your personality that allowed you to take kind of the, the research that was available and then extrapolate that and, and take that information and create something new and innovative out of it? You know, I think a lot of the foundation was my training, and I think a lot of it was that I was a chiropractor, and I looked at the information different than other people looked at it. Um, I'd always been physical. What got me into chiropractic school was I was an up. I always went to a chiropractor. I played football in college, and I had a lot of injuries, and a chiropractor was the one that helped me. And I was thinking about medical school, and, and then I realized I wanted to work with athletes, or thought they did. So I always was interested in the, in the physical and motor component and how it related. Um, and when I got into chiropractic um, and neurology, and then when I really started looking into understanding where brains came from, uh, the first uh, problems with developmental neurobehavioral disorders, learning problems, behavior problems, the most basic question was, all right, behavior and learning, what is it, right? And obviously it comes from the, is what is a brain? And where did brains come from? Why did brains develop on this planet? Uh, it has to do with thinking. And so I went all the way back in that, and I was over evolution. And um, so the first thing was really understanding that brains of movement that motor activity is what initiated the development of brains on this planet. An animal or a living thing decided to move this slowly. And in doing that, we, it requires a brain. And it requires prediction, and it requires processing, and it requires sensory. So the idea that movement and motor activity, uh, especially postural, and the idea of how does that relate to bi why why is bipolar why do we have a unique brain and why are we bipedal and how is that related to postural development and how is that it all kind of started to fit together in this fascinating way and i think the fact that i was a chiropractor the fact that i had been an athlete the fact that i was involved that i knew neurology and rehab and i was trying to combine those things together um allowed me to look at things in a unique way. And then also I just found it really exciting and and it was like a big mystery to me. And then it became very personal to me when it, and all of that I think came together. And I think that's the way we, the one characteristic I think that I've always had since I was a kid that allowed me to be successful as an athlete in school is that I'm very persistent. So when I put my mind to something and when I look at something, um, you know, there's no way I'm stopping. And the other thing was, you know, the fact that I was a chiropractor, even now, you know, like if you look at criticisms of my work on the internet, one of the things they say is, oh, he's a chiropractor, you know, what does he know about? It? And the fact that people discounted me just pissed me off to no end, you know. Like they had no idea what, what our education was as chiropractors and how much we knew and that some of the people met on the planet are chiropractors. And, you know, and so when somebody tells me I can't do something or, you know, kind of text that in some way, that's another thing that really motivates me. So I think all of it together combined in a unique way that, you know, made me obsessive but in a smart way and really allowed me to put things together in a way that nobody has ever done before. And um, it was pretty exciting. I think my main driving force, you know, we all have these basic needs that, that drive us. And one of my needs is, is basically really making a 
difference. That's why we all kind of go into the healthcare field. And the, most of us, some people it's because of significance. Some people it's because of, of other, of growth. Some people it's because they want to contribute. They want to make a difference. So from my family, I think from the time I was young, I was in a very strong feeling of responsibility that you have to make a difference in the world. You have to leave your mark and sell over and over. So I felt I had a to make a difference um, in a big way. And uh, to me, the then helping children that were struggling and families that were in pain, child who can't speak and get them to speak. I can't imagine that there's anything greater in life that for that family, for that child, and for the world. All of those things are, are kind of what contributed to, um, you know, the effort that I put in to create what I did. Yeah, thank you so much for taking us through that, you know, and taking us through your 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 passion to make a difference and then the way that you were able to synthesize all of the different uh, avenues of your life and and really create something new out of that and you know as a published author as the creator of multiple organizations um, you've really you know taken that to the next level and I, I know that I'm I, I would imagine that most students come to you and say, hey, what advice do you have for me? But as you said, like your journey was very unique and specific to you based on your background and the skills that you had. Um, I know that a lot of uh, students want to follow in your footsteps. And one of the ways I was thinking that we could kind of uh, map that out is through your, um, you know, your YouTube series, the uh, Disconnected Kids, Reconnected Families. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that series, you know, how it was created so that um, students who wanted to do similar things could kind of uh, uh, follow that blueprint that you lay out. Sure. Um, a lot of what my responsibilities have been over the past few years, when you write books and when you create an organization like Brain Balance or like I Afner have a responsibility to try to promote those things, right? To raise awareness. And uh, a lot of what I've been doing over the past 10 years is really trying to raise awareness in any way I can in the academic world, scientific world, through different conferences and through teaching all over the world, publishing, through publishing. You know, I've published six books now in the last seven years or so um, by. Um, you know, going out there and doing media and television and meeting with families and parents and opening centers. We have over 130 centers and we'll actually work with almost 10,000 families this year in the United States. Um, and so, you know, a lot of that is how do you do it in a more effective way? And um, so one of the things I've learned through my journeys is as in TV and media, uh, that that is if you want to really create a, a major impact, and at this point in my life, uh, um, that's what I'm looking for. How can I create the biggest impact? I know what I know what I teach. There is no other model out there that compares. I know. I see it. I've seen. We work. I've worked through my company and indirectly with tens of thousands, almost a hundred thousand families. The families across the world my books and use my books I have uh, been generate languages um, as well as tens of thousands that I've actually trained doctors and therapists no I know that the results are there and I know that this is a huge problem and I see the results that we get so when you know you have an answer to something that is the biggest problem I think the number one social issue of our time is what's happening in developmental um, how do you get people to listen, right? How do you get people to listen to what you want to when you have this? You know, it's in a song all came up with, you know, the idea of penicillin and nobody was listening, right? And, and it could, you know, save millions of lives. So the idea of that. And so, you know, with my wife and also, I also working, as our kid got time to really spend traveling with me and the impact that my work was having um, I wanted her to on it because 
she, you know, most of what we did in moms and she was the best mom. I know kids all struggled with different issues and, you know, she handled it in an incredible way. And those understands relationships. Women understand relationships. Typically, I think, in, and the fact is, is that mostly moms are the ones that lead the way with this and they want to hear from other moms. So I started having her work with me and I was going into homes with people because I knew that, you know, many of these people, it wasn't just about the neurology. It was also about, you know, they had become so that's why I wrote reconnected book. And that if you didn't deal with that dysfunction at home, you were result and the child wouldn't get the result. And so I started working with in their home and going into their house. And then I started bringing my wife, doing it as a team. And it really, um, and so from there, the idea was all of this and how do we make a big impact? And we connected with managers and producers, developing different TV shows. My wife and I had a TV show out of Philadelphia for a year, and then we did a radio show. And then it came that, you know, well, the best thing is to do maybe a reality TV show and out as a web series. Admittedly, that's the evolution of it. And it really, um, you know, the first reason is re of disconnected families is out there now on YouTube. It's seven episodes and it's gotten a really great response so far. And we've already filmed the second, or, uh, we hope we're going to meet a family this week. That's going to be the third family that we're going to work with. And now we're getting requests from people around the country that want us to come into them and work with their family. And, and what I'm trying to do is I, as doctors never go into a patient's home. They don't know what actually happens in the house. And this is a way of really giving them a window. I don't expect them. They don't, don't have the difficult. But it's really, uh, I wanted this to be another educational tool, but also a way of reaching out to the special needs community that feels at this point like they've been completely isolated and ignored by the media because there are no shows speaking to them and there is nothing. They just, they're not giving any hope. The thing that can be done and it's too depressing to put it on TV here from the, all the time. They feel isolated alone. Uh, nobody cares. And we wanted to reach out and say, no, you know, we do care. And not only that, here are tools that can actually change your life and you deserve to have a great life, not just an average life or not just to deal with it or manage it because they're managing these issues just to fix it. And nobody, and nobody else has the experience doing it, you know, to say it the way I have. And so we wanted to, we live in, a, in an age, we say to them, well, we can help change this. And they say, oh yeah, show me. You know, show me. Let me see. Your generation wants to see it. They want to read about it. So, and that's what we're doing. And we're going to continue to do more of that. Yeah, I'm excited to see more of that. And um, I'm excited that for the impact that's already made, I, I share a common vision with you. You know, it's why I started this YouTube channel while I'm in school, that um, through video, through media, through getting the educational resources out there to more people, we can, you know, we can create a revolution. I mean, that's where the, the name came from for the channel. Um, and, and that's why I wanted to highlight that project. Uh, I'm curious from your perspective, you know, you've been doing this for 20 years. Um, you know, where are we on the trajectory in terms of this research that you've done with brain balance, um, the interventions that you're using with kids with autism, ADHD, uh, actually becoming more mainstream? What do you, you know, where do you see we're at now? What can we do to get there more quickly so that this becomes a more mainstream intervention? Yep. Um, I think our trajectory is really quite amazing. And I believe that, again, in the world happens by chance, right? And it's a product of your intention. But also, if you're doing something that has value, the universe, God, whatever it is, is going to get it to where it needs to be. 
Um, so when I look at the trajectory for 20 years almost, and uh, doing brain balance for almost 10 years now, and the change has been really quite amazing. Um, you know, I expected to meet with a lot of negativity when we first came out because it was a completely new model. It was the first complete experts out there when they reviewed my book said, you know, this is the first completely new model in 50 um, to hit education and psychology and mental health. That's great, but it also means that it comes with a responsibility that you need to prove it and you got to also expect to be attacked. That's part of the reason why I wrote that textbook with over 4,000 references from the very beginning to kind of right off the bat. And, um, uh, but, you know, I've always tried to be involved with research. It's one of the reasons why I started IAFNR was to encourage really high-level research, why I teach. And, in, um, and so we've re actually come a long, long way. But we're on the press of something that's going to be really remarkable because – What's been happening over the past couple of years at Harvard Medical School and Hospital, which is the nation in the United States, is they've been looking at the hemisphere, looking at the idea of looking at exercise in ADHD. And the lab, uh, the lab of biopsychiatry at Harvard is one of the leading labs in the world in ADHD, bipolar, and brain neglect. And, um, you know, long story short, uh, I had a couple of psychologists from there that was a father of a key state for 35 years, but now he had a seven-year-old kid with his, of his own with ADHD. He became just like every other parent. When he bridge, found my book, Disconnect, said by page 26, it was the best book he ever read. He tried to track us down and uh, found out that I was actually invited to do a lecture at MIT on Friday uh, on action to the artificial intelligence department because the head of that department had read my textbook. And, you know, the biggest mystery in artificial intelligence is why can't they create things like a human brain? And the concept of why they can't is known as embodiment, which means without a body, you, you know, can't think. Uh, like a human. And so the head of that department happened to be seeing a chiropractor who was a friend of mine in Cambridge who had my textbook in the waiting room. And this guy would come in and every time he came in, he would, in the first three chapters, I go through evolution of the brain that relates to cognition and thinking and consciousness. So this guy just answered this question between embodiment and, and, and intellect. Come and lecture. This guy from Harvard came with another psychiatrist known in the area of of Saharaly split brain research. They came down. They saw me. They at the lab. Then enrolled their kids in one of our brain balance. And they we pretty much got rid of their ADHD. They were blown away. They had never seen anything like it. They contacted me and said, we need to study this. So, you know, we devised a, um, a plan um, to, uh, we, we helped design the study, even though it's an independent study. And basically it's, you know, a sensory motor version of what's in my book, Disconnected Kids. So it's basically just sensory motor exercises but it's, it's all geared towards stimulating the integration and in particular in ADHD, the right side of the brain, which they agreed with that concept, by the way. They also agreed that ADHD was due to right hemisphere delay and right and right problems. They will, you know, they've been looking at that research for years, but they had never seen any solution for it. Um, this, this study and they did a battery of psychological tests and educational and before and after. They also did brain imaging with the most sophisticated brain imaging tools on the planet right now. The preliminary data not only has shown huge changes in the educational models, but most significantly, there are incredible changes that are preliminary on the brain imaging data, basically in the way that nothing has ever shown before. 
um, where it's showing changes in functional connectivity, uh, lateralized effect where we're right side decreasing, uh, overactive in the left side of the brain, brain so create, creating this equilibrating inks in the brain. We're activating the prefrontal limb, activating the dorsal attention network systems. And these are physical and functional changes that are being seen, or really been seen with any sort of treatment before. And they're looking at this saying, you know, this is absolutely, and they devised a machine for looking at ADHD, which is considered the most accurate which is completely um, um, oblivious to. So the changes in that machine are also changes that they've never seen, but the change will not be. And the fact that it's a lateralized effect means that it's the, it is because of the hemispheric balance. They also, at the same time, this study, they were studying another company out of California that just does general IT uh, exercises, and um, and they actually drop. So it's not just the fact of exercises or sensory stimulation. The difference seems to be it's the fact that we're doing them with a hemispheric bias is changing the interaction and integration of the right and left hemispheres. And that seems to be the answer. Um, and I think that now it's so significant that we're actually, they're actually decided to triple the size of the study and make it into a full blown. It was initially just a pilot study. Now the effects are so amazing that they're actually into a full blown control randomized study um, with a waiting list control group and so you know it's pretty remarkable and if this continues to get the same results that we see when this comes out it's going to change the face of mental health and psychology and neuroscience I think around the world because I think that, you know one of the things we know in cognitive rehab and in neuropsychology because I have a degree in neuropsychological rehab is nothing works long term that and nothing really seems to make any significant physical or fungal brain. The first thing that actually is going to show that there are term physical functional changes in brain connectivity, and nothing has ever shown that before to this degree. Um, so you know, I think we're on the precipice of something that uh, a researcher at Harvard say that is absolutely revolutionary, um, and. He, words like that we're going to see something that is going to be quite amazing now how can you know people and chiropractic students and people like you help again the more you can kind of right now um, I think the best thing you can do is really see our YouTube videos real because there is nothing more that will bring this into the average home because What's the avenue? I think this will be all over the news when it comes out next year. Um, doesn't really, you know, know much or think about research. But they, if they watch this this web series, or if it actually gets to be a television show, which really is dependent on how many you know views we get, um, that will change everything, and people all around the world will know. You know, it will help millions and millions of people. Yeah, thank you so much for that call to action. And um, I mean, this is like you said, this is revolutionary. This is so exciting that you know, uh, uh, you know the 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 director of the Harvard research on these different disorders is coming to you and getting advice from you in order to map out this remarkable research study. Um, and so, yeah, like you said, uh, oftentimes the public perception is uh, well behind the the research that's being done. And so, um, 
you know, as the students, we really need to push the public perception forward by sharing the content that's out there about these remarkable uh, interventions and uh, systems of analysis so that the public can catch up to the research that's being done and we can really, um, you know, change change the way that the this type of care is delivered so i'll m ensure that uh, i have links to those videos in the show notes here so that people and especially students can get access to those uh, is there anywhere else that you'd like to direct students to get more information about the work that you're doing get inspired about that and you know help move this forward you know, I think uh, obviously going to my website, drrobertmalillo.com. But one of the things that I'm doing that I think, you know, because the evolution of this for me, um, you know, really started with you know, understanding what is learning and behavior, what, what happens in the brain, and then what happens to prevent someone from being able to learn or develop appropriate behavior. Um, and from that, it all comes down to brain development. Because what I do is really developmental neurology. It's not just working with kids. If you've seen any of my work or any of my videos, you know that in my classes, I, I teach kids. I, I mean, then we see primitive reflexes and developmental issues um, in people of the highest level at Oxford University this summer, you know, showed that a number of these researchers still had primitive reflexes. And, uh, and we're struggling with developmental issues. So the idea is these are, developmental neurology isn't just about kids. It's about adults. It's that any chiropractor, any doctor will see has the potential of having these issues. And um, so looking at the development of the brain, development of behavior, is also moving into the idea of personal development and accelerated learning and memory. Um, and so a lot of what I'm doing is not only taking people that can't learn and getting them to learn at the, at the way they should, but then taking anybody and getting them to go beyond where they would normally have been or to get them to really superhuman levels of learning and memory and, and really being able to, you know, do things to set goals and understanding that it all comes down to the brain. It's all part of the same science. It's all part of the same thing. Um, and so I have a Facebook page called Better Than Good, um, the science of success and happiness. And uh, every day I put out a message and it's educational and inspirational. And I usually put a video out. And I think, you know, for young people, I think they'll find that really interesting. Um, but I also encourage that if you really want to learn neurology, if you want to learn it at a way that very few people in the world will ever know it. Like all of the things that, you know, that has allowed me to come up with this model that I think is, is going to change the face of, of all of this. Um, you know, I have a course that I teach uh, through IAFNR and through NAD, uh on child developmental disabilities. And we're actually just going to have our first new board exam that's going to be held in February. And it's, uh, it's 10 modules and it's online and it's recorded. Um, and uh, I'm also going to be teaching it in Barcelona this year. So if anybody wants to come and, and get an update and come to Barcelona, but they can do it online. It's resting. We have an official board that is, you know, that is, and it's certified through national university. And I think it's the best course on neurology that take at least on the foundations. If you want to, uh, which I think, you know, anybody in chiropractic, if you want to learn neurology and functional medicine and nutrition and diet system and everything about the, um, I think you should really take that course and, um, you know, be the foundation of everything. Uh, live better than good events. We did the first one in Vegas this year at IAFNR and we're going to be probably doing another one in February at the review course. Uh, but people should, you know, pay attention to that because I think if they, you know, people come up to me all the time and ask me, how do you do what you, you know, create, how do you, you know, write all these best-selling books and do all these scientific papers 
for 28 years and three great kids and you know build a company right now that'll do probably 80 million dollars this year and and help you know tens of thousands of people around the world how do you do all of that and um you know and, and that's what really the whole bit is teaching them that these are all skills these are all skills that i developed and i learned and that i honed but they're all things that anybody can do and there are things that hold you back from being successful that you don't even realize that are there things about your brain things about your body things about your psychology and those are things that we can identify and eliminate really quickly and all of a sudden you know being successful becomes easy it doesn't have to be hard it can be fun um, so these are these are tools that I really want to teach because to not only learn my stuff but to be successful and to be any good people around you know, happy, successful, wealthy, have everything that they want and they can. And it's all, it's not hocus pocus. This is all science. This is all neurology. It's all neuroscience. And so I'm on a mission now to teach people because I realized that educating people is one thing, but if you really want to change the world, you need to inspire people. Um, and so that's what I'm about right now. Yeah. Thank you for that. And I just want to reiterate that, you know, to anybody, the better than good Facebook page, which I'll post a link to can be extremely beneficial. Um, you know, I've been following that page and been getting a lot out of the videos and, um, you know, a lot of the posts that you're making, uh, just reorienting my mindset and helping me to stay focused on the right things. Um, it's been really, really helpful. And for anybody who's in chiropractic school who wants to take that next step in terms of understanding neurology, deepening uh, their understanding of neurology, the IAFNER 10 modules, uh, neurodevelopmental program, I'll also put that in the show notes, uh, a great way to really, um, you know, make you a step above everybody else because of the depth of your understanding and knowledge and ability to uh, get people well. Um, so thank you, Dr. Melillo, so much for coming on the show and sharing so much great information. Really appreciate it. Well, thank you, Nolan. Thank you for doing Continue to be successful because, again, like I said, you know, the media world is paying enough attention and, uh, you know, people just, you know, chiropractic world too easily and, and we, we need to be a voice like yours. So it's great. I hope you inspire other students to ever do anything to help or inspire people or educate them. You know, I'm here. That's what I'm about. My son is now going to go to chiropractic, you know, um, we relate to students. So thank you for what you do. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so this has been a production of DC to be Revolution, helping chiropractic students think big in order to live large. Please subscribe to the channel, share this video, leave some comments in the comment section below. Uh, as Dr. Malillo said, let's get this message out there. Let's inspire people. Let's motivate people. Um, yeah, and we'll do it together as one big chiropractic family. <laughs>